So whenever we're looking at a design and engineering project, let's start over on the left-hand side and sort of work our way over to the right-hand side. We start out with the supply and demand points. Where is this pipeline going to start? Where is this going to stop? We design the route. We look at the features, the impacts. We look at the customer criteria, the fluid properties, the ambient conditions, and then also project economics. As this thing progresses, the project progresses, we look at codes and regulations, standards, company practices, industry recommended practices, and then what do other stakeholders need? We consider the total life cycle cost, we select the route, determine the permitting strategy, optimize the pipe, select the equipment, lay out the facilities, the control scheme, and through this process we're doing hazardous analysis to make sure we're designing the safest system that we can. So, codes and regulations and standards are not design manuals, but designs must meet codes, regulations, and standards. So here is the project life cycle. And the project life cycle for a pipeline project is not necessarily different than the pipeline life cycle for other projects. Uh, we start out on the left hand side with a concept, with a concept, with a conceptual phase. We go into the feasibility stage. Uh, can we build this? Will we make money? And then we go into front end engineering and design. So in these first three stages, there may be a bunch of recycle through those. But whenever you move from front end engineering and design into detailed design, I don't show any arrows anymore, right? Because we don't want recirculation at this point. We want to have nailed down the design so we can construct it and commission it, we can operate it and maintain it, and finally perhaps decommission. So recycling is needed over here in the first steps, not when you get into this area. The objective of this is to design a safe, environmentally responsible, reliable, and efficient system which meets the stakeholder needs at the lowest cost across the entire life cycle. Since we're talking about stakeholders, we should raise the question of who are those stakeholders? And here's just a little drawing that shows the pipeline company in the middle, a number of different stakeholders around, non-government organizations, interested citizens, customers and shippers, the industry. Not to go through and read through those all, but balancing the needs, or maybe more appropriately the wants, they might actually be needs, of all these stakeholders, it's a key challenge for pipeline management and for, design, for designing pipeline systems.